Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just want to open up our minds right now. We just want to open up our hearts. We don't want to think about anything else but God right now. We don't want to concentrate on anything and anybody else but Him. We just want to be in a place where we can hear His voice his face. We want to give God everything that we have on today. We want to kind of empty ourselves out right now so that he can have some room to dwell within us. We want to cast our cares on him because we know that he cares for us. We want to open up our minds on today and, and not be clouded with the cares of this world or even the very things of this life. We want to open up our minds right now and we just simply want to concentrate on God. We want to, we want to think about him. We want our hearts to be opened on today. We want to empty out that thing that's, that's so heavy on our heart. We want to cast it at his feet because we don't want our minds to be boggled down with anything. The Bible says that we are to enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. So even before we get to the door, we should have something in our hearts towards God. We should have something on our mind concerning Him. We want to pour out everything right now. We want to pour out that situation that kind of bothered us this morning when we got up and, and, and it kind of made us get off our square. We want to we wanna put that at His feet right now because we want to be empty for Him. We want to be empty for him. We want to. We want to. Just give him everything that we have right now. Because he created us. For him. That concern that we have. Concerning our. Our loved ones. Our mothers. Our fathers. Our sisters. Our brothers. Our children. We want to. Give that to him too. That bill that we worrying about. That we ain't got no control over. We want to give that to him. That concern that we have about our transportation. And, 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 and our job. We want to give that to him too. That's holding us bound. Even from our very childhood. We want to give that to him too. We don't want to hold none of this stuff in the inside. We don't want to keep any of this stuff inside of our hearts and in our minds. Because it seems to cloud us sometimes. And, and we can't concentrate and focus on the very thing that we need to when we come to the house of God. And it's simply him. We want to give him that situation that we're having, even in our homes. There's some things going on in our homes that we don't have no control over. We, we want to give him that thing, too. <laughs> we want to give him that thing, too, that, that situation that we're going through in our relationships, in our marriages, and, and, and in our families. We want to give that to him, too. 
We want to empty out all this stuff. That concern about that money. That, that concern that we have. Concerning our very well-being. We want to give it to them too. That, that concern that we have about our health. We want to give that to them too. We, we want to just lay all this stuff out. We want to lay all this stuff out right now. We want to lay all this stuff out right now. We want to lay all this stuff out right now. situation that we have concerning our relationships with our siblings, with our brothers, with our sisters, with our aunties and our uncles. We want to throw that at his feet right now too. We want to give that to him right now too. We, we want to lay out all this stuff right now because we want to be clear in our minds. We we want to be clear in our hearts. We, we don't want to hold any of this stuff in the inside because 90% of the time we don't have any control over it. So we want to lay all these concerns and all this stuff at his feet right now. Y'all want to write something down? Y'all want to get some, get, Khadija, get some yellow sheets of paper for me and, and, and give it to me because I, I feel some things that need to be addressed. We just want to put them on the altar this morning. We want to put them on the altar. That situation and concern that we have concerning our mother and her health, we want to put it at the feet of God today. We want to get rid of all this stuff today. We want to get rid of all this stuff. We don't want to be clouded. We don't want, we want to be in a place where we will be able to exalt God. We want to be able to exalt him. We want to be able to get to that place in him. Y'all want to come sit up in the seat right here? Y'all want to come up a little bit? Thank you. We want to throw on. We want to cast all this stuff out. And we want to give God all this stuff. Even before we go into, even before we get to his face, even before we begin to talk to him. Even before we begin to talk, even before we begin to go in this space, we want to give him everything right now. We want to open up our hearts. We want to open up our minds. We want to open up our hearts. We want to open up our minds. And we want to give him all this stuff right now. Everything, we want to give it to him right now. We want to give it to him. We want to give it to him right now. All the stuff that is bothering us, we want to write it down and we want to put it on the altar. Because when we get ready to go before God, 
to give him the praise, the glory, and the honor. We want to be completely and totally empty. We want to be empty of all the stuff, all the concern, all the worry concerning our parents, all the worry concerning money, concerning jobs, all the worry concerning our relationships. We want to throw it all at his feet right now because today is going to be a day that we want him to not just be in this place, but we want him to reside within our heart. And the only way that we're gonna do that is if we empty ourselves out so that we can make room for him. We wanna make room for God today. We wanna make room for him today because he's the only thing important. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. So even before we got to the door, we should have had this thing in our heart. We should have had it in our minds. Thank you, Jesus. And now it begins. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. We just want to lift you up. We just want to lift you up. We just want to lift you up, God. God, we want to lift you up because you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. You are great, God, and you are greatly to be praised, Lord. Oh, God, every situation and every concern that we have, God, we land it at your feet right now, God, because we're not going to allow anything body or any situation or circumstance God to cloud our minds that we can simply focus on you and you alone oh God we're going to give it to you we're going to lift you up for who you are Father God there is none other like you God in all the earth you are the king of kings and you are the lord of lords you are great God and, and you are greatly praise. God, there's none like you, God, now, then, and even to come. Oh, God, you are he who was, who is, and is to come. You are the Alpha and the Omega, God. Huh? Oh, God, you're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised, God. And if I did not or have not lifted my hands to you, Father God, I will not hold them down today. If I did not or have not lifted up my voice to you, God, I shall do it today. Because you are worthy to be lifted up. You are worthy to be glorified, God. Hope God that situation, Father God, that tried to have us bound, God. Oh God. We know you are capable of loosening us today, Father God. So we're going to lift you up, not even thinking about that situation, God. Ah. Oh, God. We're going to bless you today, Father God, with everything in us because you are worthy, God. Lord, we're going to give you what is due you, God. We're going to give you what is due you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We may have cheated you at some point in our time in our life and even on this morning, God. But we're going to bless you right now, God, because you are worthy. Oh, God, we're going to bless you and exalt you right now, Father God. Oh God, any crown we ever worn, Father God, we lay it at your feet. Any title we ever obtained, God, we lay it at your feet. Any position we ever accomplished, God, we lay it at your feet right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we are going to reverence you for who you are. Oh God, that situation, Father God, that concern, that bill, that job, that money, that wife, that husband, God, that child. Oh God, we're going to cast it down right now, God, that we may exalt you, God. Ah. Oh God, nothing shall keep that little Oh God, we're going to give it all to you, Father God. We're going to make it personal, Father God, because I can't praise you and lift you 
you up for nobody else. Oh God, I need it on good feet. Oh God, we bow down to you today. We bow down to you today, Father God, in reverence, God, and in awe and respect of you, Father God. Oh God, we give you everything that we have today, Father God. Oh God, we're out pouring it right now, Father God. We are pouring our praises to your God. We we are pouring our worship unto you today, God. We are pouring our love unto you today, Father God. He can't let it out. Oh, shut the gate, man. Oh God, he can't let it out. Oh God, we're not gonna be minus. We're not gonna allow no rocks to cry out oh, for us, God. Oh God, but we're gonna open up our mouths, our hearts, and our minds unto you, Father God, and we're gonna lift you up, God, because you said, God, ha! that if we lift you up, God, you would draw men unto you, God. And we are in expectation of being your presence, God. We're going to lift you up, God, that we may have a surety, God, of being at your feet. Oh, oh God, we glorify you. Oh, God, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you because you are worthy. You are worthy, God. There is none other like you, Father God. You are all time powerful, God. You are great and you are greatly to be praised, God. You are omnipotent, Father God. You are marvelous, God. You are omnipresent. Oh, God, you are wonderful. You are wonderful, God. Oh, God. And if there's anything in our lives that we have exalted by your cosy, God, we cast it down right now. If there's anything or anybody we bow down to, God, more than you. Oh, God, we bow down to you today. Oh, God, we glorify you, God. We glorify you right now, Father God. I'm glorifying you, God. Oh, God, we lift you up. We lift you up as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, Father God. You are so great, Father God. You wrote our story and we don't even know go see. We was not even informed in our mama's belly. Oh, God, you so powerful, Father God. You know I ended while we right here in our courage. Jesus. Oh God, we lift you up. We lift you up, God. We lift you up, Father God. We lift you up as our sovereign king. We lift you up, God, as our sovereign king. Oh God, there is only one king and that is you, God. You are the king of kings and the lords of lords. You are greater than any and everything, God. Oh God, and we bow down to you. We tell you how much we love you. We tell you how much we adore you on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we just want to tell you, Father God, that you mean everything to us right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We dare not put anything above you, God. And if by chance we put anything or anybody above you, Father God, we say we're sorry right now, God. We just want to apologize on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I see I got to little of both because even in spite of what we think or what we feel, Father God, we know without a shadow of a doubt that you are the most important thing in this life. Ah! Oh God, we bless you. 
We tell you how much we love you. We tell you how much we adore you on today, Father God. We bless you on today, Father God, with every morsel of our being, Jesus. Oh God, you say we ought to love you with all our heart, all our mind, all our body, all our soul, and all our might. Ah. Oh God, I love you with all my might. Ah, I get it. Oh God, with every morsel of our being, God. We just want to bless you and lift you up, Father God. Oh God, because you are the finisher of our faith. God, you're going to see. I take it. I'm going to see. 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 I'm going to see.
people let us both talk, eat, sleep, smell, taste, feel, good, such fun of love. Even 
sending your ministry angels to talk to us, God. We want to thank you all today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you in Augusta for even giving us that healing. The healing in the mind. The healing in the body. The healing in the heart. The healing in our situation, God. We thank you for healing our land, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Because you could allow it to be a dry land, God. But your water is in God. And then you increased it. And for that, we want to thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we want to thank you for the increase, God. God, we thank you for the overflow. We thank you for the perfecting of your love, God. Oh, God, we just want to thank you on today, God. We just want to thank you on today, God. For directing our footsteps to God and our paths, Father God. And even when we felt like we wanted to go to the left, God, when you say go to the right, huh? we want to thank you for the auctioning, God, huh? to do the very thing that you say to. Huh? Oh, God, we want to thank you. Jesus. Huh? We thank you for the closeness. Oh, God. We thank you, God. For even the absolutions that you gave us in our heart, God. We thank you for removing the barriers. We thank you on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for replacing it with compassion and with piety on today. We just want to thank you on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because we know, Father God, without a shadow of a doubt, God, that you are concerned about our circumstances. You are concerned about our situation. You are concerned about our welfare. You are concerned. You are concerned, God, and for that. Oh, God. We want to thank you. We want to thank you. Oh, God. Now, God, we ask you to forgive us for all our sins and all our wrongdoings. Forgive us for our trespasses and our iniquities and even our secret sins, God, that's Hidden in our hearts that we don't even know about, God. I pray that you will forgive us for yet remove it from us, Father, because we don't want to do anything, God, that's not pleasing in your sight. We don't want to go to the right or to the left or backwards, but God, we want to go forward because there's the way to go, but we're coming to you on today, God, and we're asking you to help us, God. We ask you to help us on today, Father God, because sometimes it seems like it's kind of hard for us to do the right thing, God. Sometimes it's kind of hard for us, Father God, to say the right thing. Sometimes it's kind of hard, Father God, for us to act the right way. Oh, God, we ask for you to help us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We come into you all messed up as we are. We come into you with all our mess, Father God, and we ask for you to fix us on today, God. We ask for you to touch us in our minds, Father God, that we will not be conformed to this world and this life and the care of the God. We ask for you to help us to transform the way that we think, God, the way that we think about others, Father God, the way that we think. And what we think, God, to even say about others to others, God. Ah, we want you to help us us today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Not something in the local sea, ah. Even in our hearts, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Ah. We ask for you to remove some things, Father God, that have been planted, God. Ah. We ask for you to uproot some seeds, Father God, in the name of Jesus, ah, that has been dropped into our soil. Ah. We ask for you to remove it on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because the only thing that we want to be chill within our hearts, Father God, is you do the chill. Jesus. Oh God, we ask for you to help us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We ask for you to remove that spirit of bitterness, God. Remove any jealousy, envy, and respect by your tail barrier, and cover this lavishness, maliciousness, debate, hate. Any bitterness, fornication, masturbation, any vain thinker, side thinker, perverted thinking, any hateful thinker, or not thinkers, and simply wagging our hands. We ask for you to remove that spirit of pride and that spirit of haughtiness, Father God. We ask for you to remove that spirit of stubbornness, Father God, because some of us don't even want to simply say I'm sorry. Oh God, we ask for you to remove these things from us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We ask for you to remove the hardness of our hearts, Father God. We ask for you to remove the hardness of our hearts, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, that we can be not consumed in our own mess. Oh God, I'm asking you to help us out today, Father God, to be just what you want us to be and do just what you want us to do and act. Does God see the way 
that you want us to act, God. Oh, God, I'm asking you to help us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you to help us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, to love one another the way that we should. I'm asking you to give us that love, Father God, that you ordained in your book, Father God. Because you said that you are love, Father God. I'm asking you to give us that kind of love, Father God, that really will cover a multitude of sins. I'm asking you to give us that kind of love, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that really would allow us to forgive one another wholeheartedly, Father God. I'm that we have not even experienced before, Father God. And the only way we're going to experience it, Father God, is through you and your love, Father God. Because we really don't know how to love. Oh God, I'm asking you to help us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I got a little shot that I can see. Sever that time hate. Ah! Jesus, I got a little shot that I can see. I'm asking you to help us on today, Father God. I'm asking you to help us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because only you can, Father God. We holding on to some stuff, Father God, that's causing us to be our conscience and our conceit, to be all messed up. And God, I want you to give us that kind of love, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that that very thing that we holding on to, even from our very childhood, Father God, that the love that you put inside of us, God, it will sever that thing. It will sever it, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And the love that you put inside of us, God, it will uproot some stuff. Oh, God, and you can tell the Jesus. Oh, God, I'm asking you to do it. I'm asking you to do it on today, Father God. Because only you can, God. I'm asking you to give us that kind of love, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that no matter what people do to us, Father God, we're going to love them anyhow. I'm asking you to give us that kind of love, Father God, that no matter what they say about us or even to us, God, we're going to love them anyhow. I'm asking you to give us that kind of love, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that even when we see our brother, our sister, in a bad in a dark place, in a bad place, God, we're going to love them anyhow. And that's a very person that just did something to you. Oh, God, I'm asking you to kind of love, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we would embrace any and everybody, Father God, no matter who they is, no matter what culture they came from, no matter how they look, and even how they smell, God, I'm asking you to give us that kind of love, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we would have a sincere and pure, fervent, high heart for God. I'm asking you to give us that kind of love, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we won't be so stubborn, God. That we won't be so hard-hearted, God. That we won't be so bitter, Father God. I'm asking you to give us that kind of love, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that'll break up some stuff, Father God. Oh, God, because we don't want to have this stuff in our heart, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Because it's not going to be pleasing in your sight, God. And we simply want to please you. It's not about me, him, her, they, we, and us. But it's all about you, God. Hide it in the Oh, God. I'm asking you to give us that kind of love, Father God, in the name of Jesus. That will move stumbling blocks. I'm asking you to give us that kind of love in the name of Jesus. That'll break up some spotted in Ocosia. Some swallowed stuff. It's some stuff that we've been swallowing. Oh, God, I'm asking you on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. That you give us that kind of love, Father God, that no matter what we hear, Father God, the love that you put inside of us, Father God, will break up some ideas, God. I'm asking you to give us that kind of love, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that there is nothing huh, huh, that will shake it. Oh, God, I'm asking you to do it on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because only you can. You're the only one that can fix that thing, Father God. You're the only one that can fix that thing, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And the only way that we're going to be perfected, Father God, in you is through love. I'm asking you to help us on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, to embrace that thing called love. I get it in a little quick shot. Oh God, I'm asking you to help us on today, God. I'm asking you to help us on today. I'm going to play this song that the Lord put on my heart. So. So. 
I've been in consecration and been fasting. Woo! Ever since Thursday night. So, I'm, I feel like I'm on fire. I can't even tell y'all. Listen to me. The Lord been dealing with me about this little thing. He been dealing with me about this little thing. And he want me to share some stuff with y'all because in actuality, we don't even know what love is. We don't even know how to distinguish what love is. We have not even experienced what love is. We don't know what love is because against what's being in love. We don't know what hate is. About. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you the title of the sermon that he gave me today. Love is real and so is hate. So I'm going to tell y'all some stuff about love and hate today. I'm going to share some things with y'all today so this song right here I gotta start it from the top cause I'm praying for more I'm praying for more I want the more I don't know about nobody else and I know without a shadow of a doubt if I get the more of God I'm gonna get the more of love I know that without a shadow of a doubt I know it because the Bible says that God is love that's what the Bible says not only do the Bible say that God is love, the Bible lets us know and tells us that without love, we are, we are nothing. Without love, we cannot accomplish nothing. Without love, we cannot even do anything. We talking about love, God, as well as hate. I want y'all to listen to this. I pray for more, I've been praying for more. Y'all just don't even have a clue. My God. Jesus, we need more of your love, God. We need more of your revelation, God. We need more right now, God. Uh, we need that kind of love, Father God, that we'll be able to forgive that person, God, that, that, that stepped on our toes. We need that kind of love, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that we'll forgive that person, Father God. We need that kind of love, God. We're going to forget that kind of person, Father God. They don't even know how to treat us, God. We want more, God. We want more of your love, God. Because the only way we're going to be able to please you, God, is if we got that kind of love. We need that kind of love, Father God. That's going to break up the stuff, Father God. We need that kind of love, God. That's going to uproot Yeah. 
scriptures on today about that thing called love. I'm going to give y'all some examples about love and hate. See, because some of us, we don't even know we hate. Because we use that word, so, oh, I hate when they do this. Oh, I hate when that happens. Well, we use that word so loosely too. And so we have allowed ourselves to supplant that word hate in our heart. I hate when a person do this. When a person act like this, I hate we we a mess. We a mess. I'm listen to me. Listen to me when I sit up here and tell you guys. Love is a strong word, and yet so is hate. I'm gonna tell y'all again the name of the sermon today that he gave me. He gave me this thing, I want to say on last Monday. Love is real, and so is hate. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It's real. Dear God in heaven. As I stand before your people on today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you, God, to give me what to say and how to say it, God. Lord, I'm asking you to allow me to decrease that you may increase. Lord, I'm asking you to allow your spirit to flow through this place, God. Sing your glory train, Lord. Open up the minds of your people, Father God. Open up the ear gates of your people, Father God. Open up the hearts of your people, Father God, that they can receive simply what you gave to me. Oh God, I'm asking you to help us on today, God. I'm asking you to help us on today, Father God, and purge out what we may think. Purge out what we may feel. Purge out all that stuff, Father God, that may cause us, Father God, not to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Oh God, I'm asking you to help us on today. I'm asking you to help us on today, God. Send your ministering angels. Go down each and every last one of these views and meet the needs of your people, God. Oh, my mind, you don't go see. Lord, you know a name by name. You number the very hairs on their head, Father God. Oh, God. We pray for more today. 
I want more than somebody else. Oh God. We want more of your love, God. More of your peace. More of your absolutions, God. More of the way you see instead of what we see. Because we are always deceived by what we see and what we hear. Oh God. Oh God, I'm asking you to help us on today, God. Give us some more. We pray for more today. We pray for more today, Father God, in the name of Jesus, because we can't get it from nobody else but you, God. We pray for more right now, God. I'm asking you right now to outpour. Ah! Outpour it, God. Huh? I'll pour your blood. Wash us, make us over, cleanse us. Oh, God. We need more. I'm crying out right now for your people, Father God. I'm standing in the gap right now, God. Asking you for the more. Bless everybody that's here, God. Bless everybody that's on the way, Father God. Bless the ones who need to come and, and won't come. And bless the ones who desire to come and simply can't. Oh, God. Let your word go out on today, Father God. That it will be fruitful in the hearts of your people. Jesus. Jesus. We ask you to answer these prayers, God. And all of this, Lord, in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Love is real. And so is hate. My God. The Lord gave, gave me so many scriptures. I tried to write down all this stuff because this saying just ministered to me so. It just showed me some stuff. Jesus. The Bible says that God is love. So I want to read some scriptures first. And then I'm going to tell y'all some things. Because what we need to understand right now is that there are different kinds of love. Keep that in mind. It's different kinds of love. It's all kinds of love. I want y'all to remember that. I'm going to give y'all some examples. I'm giving y'all some scriptures. I'm giving y'all some, some truth today of what the Lord gave me. Because not only is love real and so is hate and that there's different kinds of love, but we also do things for the sake of love and for the sake of hate. We do. We do. So we're going to start the first scripture that I want to read. We're going to go to 1 John. No, no, that ain't where I want to start. I'm sorry. Let's start at St. John. We're going to start at the 15th verse. Jesus. And I'm going to try to contain myself. Because, baby,
St. John 15 chapter. 15 chapter. Fifteen chapter. There are books in the pews, Bibles in the pews. We're going to start at verses 12, and we're going to read two verses. But we're going to read verse 12, and then I want to say something. And again, y'all pray for me, please. Pray for me, please. On Thursday, when the Lord told me to consecrate myself, in the midst of him telling me that, I had to kind of like shut down from anything and everybody. And when he puts me in that place, he also tells me to fast because and consecrating and fasting is two different things. I have to be empty. I have to be totally and completely empty that I can receive everything that he has given me for me first, that I may be able to give it to you guys. This sermon is extremely important for all of us. This sermon here, love is real, and so is hate. Please, listen. Minister Simeon, could you do me a favor, please? Could you get some oil? And I want you to anoint everybody ear gates. I want you to start from the head. So, St. John, 15th chapter. I want y'all to just bear with me one second, please. read. St. John 15th chapter 12th verse. Read that. Read that. Read that. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Okay. So So, do we love one another as Jesus loved us? Do we? When Jesus was talking to his disciples, he said that the greatest commandment is that we love one another as we love ourselves. And John, he said, we ought to love one another as he loved us. That's what he said. Love. Let me describe what we believe love is. Naturally. We believe love is by giving gifts. We believe love is by telling somebody we love them. We believe love is by coming together and sex, you know, having sex. We we believe love is by kissing one another and 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 and, and, and all this mediocre stuff. That's what we believe love is. 
The Bible says that we ought to love one another as we love ourselves. How much do you love your own self? You love you. You love you. I told you guys that there are different kinds of love. There are different kinds of love. First Peter chapter four. First Peter chapter four says that. Verse eight. First Peter chapter four, verse eight. What do that scripture say? And above all things, have fervent charity. Charity means love. Read. Among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Okay. Love, they call it charity in the Bible. It's charity. My grandmother used to always say this to me. Charity starts at home and spreads abroad. Because she started instilling that inside of me as a little, a, a little girl, I believe that charity was giving stuff. You, charity is, that's what I believe. I believe that charity was to give stuff. The Bible says that charity starts at home and then spreads abroad. I believed as a little kid that it was, okay, I got to make sure that I be giving people stuff. So when I was a little kid, that's what I used to do. I used to always, oh my gosh, I don't know what it was with me. If I had something, I just wanted to make sure everybody else had something. I just, I, let me go to school. Let me go to school and it was somebody in the lunchroom and they sitting there and everybody else got candy and they ain't got nothing. I go get them, to here, you can have my candy. You, you, because that's what I thought charity was. As a little girl. But in actuality, that was piety. That was, I, I had it twisted. Charity means love. That's what the Bible says. I'm fixing to give y'all some examples. This same ministered to me this weekend, y'all, I'm telling you, <laughs> with a whole week. There are different kinds of love. There are different kinds of love. The first love that we are supposed to experience is love in the home with our mamas and our dads. Okay? Let me tell you about that kind of love. That kind of love is the kind of love that God ordained for us naturally. It starts in the home with the mother and the father coming together, then they conceiving us and then they showing us love, right? They, so what kind of love do our parents show us? They show us love in different ways. Some of us get affectionate love, I love you. They give you hugs, they give you kisses, they dick. And some parents, they, they show you love just by making sure you got everything that you need. They, they I love my kids because they ain't known for nothing. They know, some parents, they simply, they, they, you, you know I love you because you're my child. But they never just walk up to you and say, I love you, baby. Come get mama a hug. Or your daddy. How many times your daddy told you he loved you as a kid? Oh, I love you, daddy. I, I, I love you, baby. Come on. You, you, I, these are, I'm giving y'all examples. Listen, because this ain't for the run deep. So, in receiving love first experience in love is from our parents that's the kind of love that we first experience and guess what can I tell y'all about the boomerang that, that, that jumps inside of there from our parents love favoritism between the siblings Okay? Favoritism between you. Can't nobody in here sit up and say they have not experienced it. Not one person. Not one person. That if you if you if you can sit up here and tell, oh maybe if you're the only child. <laughs> maybe if you're the only child. 
Favorite tip. Yeah, I'm gonna give y'all a story in the Bible. Let me give y'all a story. See, because this stuff is real. This stuff is real. The love of favoritism in the children will cause hate amongst the siblings. I know. I'm, did I tell y'all I, I got more than, and I ain't the only child, right? And I saw favoritism <laughs> with, 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 with the people, the family, and the folk towards me, my, my siblings. Come on. Okay. So, the Bible says that. <laughs> There was a set of twins in the Bible, and their names was Esau and Jacob. Okay, Esau and Jacob. Wait a minute. I, okay, thank you, Lord. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get back to this story. Let's start with this story here. I told y'all about the, the favoritism with the parents, okay? Adam and Eve had two children. One of them was Cain and the other was Abel, okay? And I'm gonna try not to cry when I tell the story. One of them was Cain and one of them was Abel. The Bible says that one of them was a hunter. He used to go out and hunt. And the other one used to be in the tents and stuff like that. I'm gonna collaborate these two stories about favoritism, okay? The Bible says that Esau and Jacob. I want y'all to follow me, please. Follow me. It was a set of twins. And one of them was a hunter. And one of them was to well in the tents. Y'all gotta pay attention because God be he be opening up these mysteries and revelations to me. Listen. So, Cain and Abel was the children of Adam and Eve. And every year, or every so often, it didn't say every year yet, they would go and offer up gifts unto God. They would go and offer up gifts unto God. In the midst of them offering up gifts unto God, the Bible says that Cain brought what he got from the land, what he hung on his, and offered it unto God. And Abel brought his gift, the first fruits, and offered it unto God. The Bible says that God rejected Cain's gift and accepted Abel's gift. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that in the midst of him rejecting his gift, it made him feel some type of way. It, 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 it sparked something inside of him. The Bible says that, this is the name of my sermon that the Lord gave me. Love is real and so is hate. In the midst of him rejecting Cain's, he started looking at Abel some type of way. How many times that didn't happen to you in your life? Let's talk about event. I'm always talking about me, Amy. Let's talk about event. You, me, him, her, then we, all of us 
have a certain way that we go to God and offer some things up to him. Okay? When you go to God, tithes, because that's what they was giving him, offering up their tithes. Tithes. When you give God your tithes, you're giving him the first fruits. So when you make, you, you get your paycheck or you get whatever. The Bible says you're supposed to take his off first. 10%. His off first. And you're offering that up to him. How about when you come into his presence and you ain't necessarily got to be coming to the church. You could be at home getting ready to pray. When you offer up, how do you, what do you offer up to God? What, how do you offer yourselves up to him? How do you offer the praise? How do you offer the worship? How do you offer the love? How do you offer these things unto God? The Bible says that when Abel went and offered his gift up to God, he accepted it, but his brother Cain gift was offered and he did not accept it. Cain felt some type of way because God favored his brother and didn't favor him. So how many times somebody look at you or see how you praise or see how you worship or see how God favors you in so many areas in your life and it provokes hate. It provokes anger. It provokes them to feel some type of way, say some type of thing, or act some type of way. The Bible says that it made Cain feel so messed up until he literally killed his brother grave yard dead. It's different kinds of love. Love is real and so is hate. Are y'all following me? He hated his brother because God accepted his gift and rejected his. Esau, Jacob, they were twins. They were twins. The Bible says that. I'm telling y'all how love begins in the home with our mothers and our fathers. Y'all got that, right? Favoritism amongst the siblings. It's different kinds of love, y'all. The Bible says, and it, it, it says it. I'm not making this stuff up. The Bible says in Genesis 25, it says that Isaac, come on, go to Genesis 25. Go to Genesis 25. I just, I, just, I, I, I want to, I, I want to read this. Genesis 25. The Bible says that they had a set of twins. They had a set of twins. Okay? They did not come out looking alike. The Bible says one of them was hairy and the other one had smooth skin. Okay? The Bible goes on to say in chapter 25, verse 27, and the boys grew. Read that. Start there. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, he was a, hunter. a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau. Isaac was the father. He loved one more than he loved the other. Read. Because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And Rebekah loved... Who? How, how many times? Your siblings got more love than you. Huh? Just say you only had one parent in the home, like me, because my father, he passed away when I was young. And so was just my mom. But my grandmother and grandfather was there all the time too. But I saw the favoritism in how my mother loved her and him more than she loved me. 
I love them more than she loved me. Huh? The Bible says it, don't it? It says that daddy loved Esau more and Rebecca, the mother, loved Jacob more than she loved Esau. Different kinds of love. Favoritism. Favoritism. The Bible says that not only did they love them and show distinguished in them, back then in them days, a birthright meant something to a man. An inheritance. So if the father died, then he would bless the oldest, and then it goes on down to each one of them. And so Rebecca loved Jacob so much. He was the younger twin. Esau was the older. He, she loved him so much until she heard him make a comment to, she heard her husband make a comment to the son that he loved so much until she deceived her husband with her son to get the blessing. More than the one who had the right to it. And in the midst of it, she caused friction between the siblings. I know, I, 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 y'all follow me, Be, because let me tell you, an incident had happened when I was coming up. In the midst of this incident happening, my mother showed favor with the other children besides me, and I saw it. And because I saw it, it made me feel some type of way. And I ain't like them. I didn't like them. I didn't like them. But my brother and my two sisters, one of them is dead. She died when she was 30. I didn't, I didn't. I only liked the one, and that was the one that died. And the only reason why I liked her, because when the favoritism was shown, she'll recognize it, and she'll come and be like, here, share, share with me. But she, favoritism, you didn't, you didn't like it, did you? It don't feel good. It caused friction between the siblings. Even though you love them, you still hate them. Love is real, and so is hate. It got to the point where it's when my brother would say one thing to me, I literally was trying to kill him graveyard dead. Y'all think I'm kidding, don't y'all? I wish my mama was here to tell y'all what I used to do to him, what I used to do to him. And he was the oldest, and I was not scared. I just wanted him dead. Follow me. Love is real, and so is hate. When these distinguishes is happening with our siblings, they can feel it, they know it, and they can tell it. Let's not cause our children to be victims of favoritism. Love them the same. How can we do that? The Bible says that not only did he hate him? The brother found out what the other one did, and the mama said, you better run, because he gonna kill you. And when he ran, when he ran, when he ran, he ran to his mother's siblings. And, and I'm gonna be going back and forth, y'all. I'm telling y'all, listen to me. I told y'all there's different kind of love. And here's love at first sight. Y'all don't believe I love at first sight? I believe I love at first sight. <laughs> Here's love at first sight. It was Jacob. Jacob. And Rachel. Genesis 29. I'm giving y'all these scripts. Y'all read this stuff when y'all get home. Love at first sight was with Esther and King Gehazarus. Let me tell you something. We talking fact. We talking. Let's talk about love at first sight. We talking about Samson and the Philistine woman. The Bible says that when Samson went into the city, 
He lay eyes on his Philistine woman. He was like, oh, wait a minute. Bible said went home. He told us that he said, Daddy, I see this lady in the in the, in the city. I know, and, and what I need you to do, I need you to go and get her for me. The Bible says that she was pleasing to his sight. He said, Why you want her? Why you want her? Be, because you would need you, you why do you want her? Why you can't get somebody over here? Why you uh, love, unapproved love? Ha! How many people in your family feel like that person ain't good for you? Or you shouldn't marry that person? Or you shouldn't be with that unapproved love? Let's talk about that. Can we talk about unapproved love for a little while? Let's talk about the man who loved his stepsister. They had different mothers same fathers. The Bible say he loved her so much until he wanted her. The Bible never says that she willingly went to bed with him or he raped her. He, the Bible never says, but the Bible does say that he came in unto her and then afterwards what the Bible say, he hated her. He hated the very sight of her. I think I would want. We're talking about these different kinds of love. That the Bible talks about. I ain't making this stuff up. I ain't, I ain't making this stuff up. We, we, let's talk about Ruth <laughs> and Boaz. Everybody want their Boaz, don't they? Y'all need to understand, women, that Ruth asked Boaz to marry her. He didn't ask her to. See, because women be like, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for him to ask to marry me. Guess what? Ruth asked Boaz to marry her. That's another love at first sight. She, she, the boy had laid eyes on her. She was in the field. He was like, wait a minute, who, who was that chick? She, 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 she looked different from the rest of the folks. She, she, who is that? We talking, we talking about love today as well as hate. We're talking about how the Bible says that not only did Esau hate Jacob for stealing his birthright, got his blessings and all that he ran, he hated him so much until he was going to kill him. The Bible said time went by, and when he went back, listen, let's talk about Jacob and his mess. Jacob was a mess. His mama made him like that. A great deceiver. His mama made him like that. And everything that he sold, he reaped. Because he was deceived. The Bible says the very first woman that he laid eyes on, which was Rachel, he fell in love with her. And he wanted her. He went to Rachel's daddy and said, can I have your daughter? He said, I, I, I don't want you to just give it to me. I'll work for her. The Bible says he worked seven years for that girl's dad. Just to have, his, have her hand in marriage. Just to get her. He wanted her so much. And, 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 and Laban deceived him. Didn't he deceive his brother? I'm telling you what you saw that shall you read. The Bible says that he deceived him. Because back then before you got married, you know, when, when they came, you was all covered up. They couldn't see your face. They couldn't, they couldn't see all that different other stuff. The Bible says that we, after they had constant, you know, got, you know, got married and everything, they wanted, he wanted to consummate the, 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 the woman, you know, the marriage. And, and, and when he came unto her, the Bible says after he uncovered her, he realized it wasn't Rachel, but it was her older sister. <laughs> the Bible clearly says, y'all got to read these stories. I'm not kidding y'all. That he was mad at him and told him, he said, you gave me her and you made me such, 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 such. So he was mad at the dad. The dad said, it, it ain't me. I got, you got to marry the oldest first. You can't, you can't have the younger. You can't have her. And then the Bible says that he said, well, I still want Rachel. 
He said, I still won't raise. He said, I'll work seven more years for her. So he worked seven more years for her to get Rachel. Then the Bible says this. This blew me, y'all. This blew me. He said, the Bible says, he loved Rachel and hated her sister, Leah. He hated her. He Two women, love one, hate the other. The Bible says that because he hated Leah, who did God favor? The one he hated. The very one he hated. It's good to be the underdog sometimes. <laughs> hate me, baby. Because <laughs> let me tell you something, God will favor you. God, listen. We're talking about Love is real, and so is hate. The Bible says that not only do love make you want to do all kind of sacrifices for a person, the Bible says you will do anything for them. The Bible says, my main man, David. Y'all know I love myself some David. I love that man right there. You hear me? He the only one in the Bible that God favored so much that when he did sin, God gave him three choices. Who does? Who get them kind of choices? It's either or. That's another, another story. The Bible says that it all started when Saul was rejected from being the king. In the midst of him being rejected from being the king, the Bible says that the Lord sent an evil spirit on him. In the midst, one of his workers said, you know what, we should get somebody to play some music for you. Because if they cunning with playing the string instruments, which was a harp, then the evil spirit will go away. The Bible says that. He said, go, find me somebody who can play for me. The Bible says that they went and found David. This was the very first introduction of David and King Saul. The Bible says that they went and found David in the midst of them finding David. He came and he played the harp. The Bible says that he plays so cunningly and it was so soothing to the ears and to the spirit that every time he played, that evil spirit would go away. And then the Bible declares that Saul loved David greatly. When you love somebody greatly, baby, that's a whole lot of love. The Bible says, so I'm telling y'all, I ain't making this up. It's in, it's in 1 Samuel. Read it. The Bible says that he loved him greatly. He loved him so much until he made him his right-hand man. He made him his armor bearer. The Bible says so. Not only did he make him his armor bearer, he made him, because... When, he, when David was introduced to Saul, they say not only can he play, but he's valiant. He's good with the sword and the spirit. He, he's a fighter. He, the Bible says that he made him captain over some folk and people in his army. That's what the Bible says. So not only was he playing for him, and he became his right-hand man, the Bible says that he had favor and became somebody. In the midst of him becoming somebody, he sent them out. And when he came back valiant and, and, and a winner, everybody started favoring him. Everybody, who David is, he the man. He, he the winner. He done did this and he done said this and he he done look at him. He 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 doing more than our king doing. He's a, 
And it made them feel some type of way. It made Saul feel some type of way because I'm the king. I'm the head one in charge. What the world? What the world? He, the Bible says that he got jealous of his right hand man. He got jealous of him. And started competing. That Don't that happen in the church? Don't. don't. Jealousy rise up. Start competing. Start. I experienced all this stuff. I'm telling you, I, I was preaching in Detroit and I did the 8 o'clock service and the pastor of the church did the 1030 service. And everybody started coming to the 8 o'clock service. And they know who the pastor was, but they know that I prayed a lot. They don't want me to come to their house and pray. They don't want me to and I always tell the pastor, you know, such and such said, want me to come to their house and pray. I just wanted to let you know, you want to go with me, such and such said, because you can pass it up. It provoked something in that man. It, it provoked something in him. He's like, we're not going to do the 8 o'clock service no more because they need to know that I'm the pastor. And such and such, I said, okay. Huh? Go with me. Huh? Jealousy and leadership. Because God favors a person. Because God does a thing that causes the competitiveness and the acting a certain type of way and the doing a certain type of thing and the saying a certain type of thing. That's what happened with David and Saul. So he hated that man so much until he tried to kill him. Not once. Not twice. Three times. Graveyard did He wanted him dead so bad until he chased him. Even after. And let me tell you about David. He honored and respected him and loved him so much. Until when somebody came and lied to him about the very man that was trying to kill him, he killed them. You don't necessarily have to put nobody under the grave in order to murder them. You don't. The very words you say, the very seeds that you plant, the very, listen, the Bible says that. Not only, listen to this. this see, because it was a whole lot that went along with Saul and David. The Bible says that he had a daughter named Michelle she loved David so much and so she betrayed her own father just to keep him alive. The man she loved to keep him alive because her daddy wanted to kill him. His son, his son Jonathan loved him so much and so he told him, you know what? I know my daddy don't like you. And I believe that he's trying to kill you because he done tried to kill you a couple times. But I'm going to go out into the field with him. And if he trying to kill you, I'm going to give you a sign. I'm going to let you know you need to run for your life. You need to love, you, you need to run for your life. The Bible says that when, when, when David came into the castle and became his heart player, that he met the son Jonathan. The Bible says that they souls was knitted together. What kind of friend? Who got that kind of friend? Who got that kind of friend? That your soul knitted together with him. Not only is your soul knitted, the Bible declares, let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible also says that. I want you to go to 1 Samuel, and I want you to get me, I want you to get me, no, 2 Samuel, and I want you to go to the first chapter. I, I got to say something to you. The Bible says that in 1 Samuel 18 verses 1 through 4, that Jonathan loved David as his own soul. The Bible also says that their souls was knitted together. Okay? Now, when, when Jonathan died, <laughs> when Jonathan died, it grieved David so much. And so this is what he said. I want you to read 2 Samuel, first chapter, read verse 26 for me. 
Read verse 26. First Samuel. I am distressed for thee. This is David talking about Jonathan because he died. He said, what? Well, I am distressed for thee. What? My brother Jonathan, very pleasant hast thou been unto All me. you being is good to me. That's all you've been ever since the first day I met you. You've been good to me. Read. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. You love me more than you love the woman. You know how men love women. Ha! You know, boy, men love a woman. You hear what I say? God has put something down inside of a man that when they love a woman, baby, they'll go through the ringer. Do you hear what I say? They will take all kind of mess. Y'all better read Samson and Delilah. You hear what I say? Samson loved Delilah so much until the very secret that he was supposed to go to his grave when he told her his secret. They got him killed. Yeah. Are y'all following me? I, she loved money so much until she sold him for 1,100 pieces of silver. You, you, the man she said she loved. You, we're talking about the for the sake of love. Can we talk about for the sake of love for a minute? I, I, what I didn't I didn't told y'all about betrayal of love. I done told y'all how there's a thin line between love and hate. Y'all know that song, don't y'all? <laughs> it's a thin line between love and hate. I done told y'all about that. I done told y'all about how how you can you can love something so hard and so much. I told, I told y'all about the love of the mother and the father, the, the love of betrayal. I done told y'all about the love of deception. I, I done... I done told y'all about love at first sight, about Samson and Philistine woman, Boaz, Esther, Esther, Esther. Ha! Let's talk about Esther and love at first sight. We're talking about a king, baby. You hear what I'm saying? And she, and all the women, you know, that was the first beauty contest, too. Y'all know that's where them beauty contests come from, Esther. <laughs> that was the first beauty contest, baby. Listen. As soon as he lay down, I was like, you know, it's something when a man look at you and be like, ooh. The first time he lay eyes on you, baby. <laughs> I believe in love at first sight because it's in the book. I believe that thing. Love at first sight. The love between friends. What about the love of money and greed? Let's talk about Jezebel. Everybody in here, I told y'all about Jezebel. Everybody think Jezebel was a whoremonger and a, and a, and a home wreck. No, that is not what Jezebel was. She was not. I want y'all to forget about that. That ain't what she was. Jezebel was a manipulator. She was a murderer. She was a killer. She was a deceiver. She loved her husband so much until she had a man killed to get him just what he wanted. You love, you love, you love your husband like that? You love your husband. You love your husband so much, baby. Look, the Bible says that Sarah loved Abraham so much until she called him Lord. With a lowercase L, though. She called him Lord. Let, let me tell you something about a woman. You can be with a hundred million women in your life. But if you get that one that loves you, baby, you better hold on. You better hold on to that one right there. Let me tell you something. I told my son that. I told my son that my son's father died when he was a young kid. And so I was a single parent raising my son. And I told my son, I said, let me tell you something, boy. If you get that one woman that love you like that, you bet. Guess who love my son like that? That one, the one he had the baby by them seven twins. He done did that girl. Look, I told her, I say, girl, leave him. Take too much of his food, then that's my son. I don't give a rest to baby. I'll hold my kids up and they wrong. I don't. I, you're not going to keep doing that girl like that. Leave him. The, you got to be kidding me. She I, I, I can't. The stories. I, I, I really want to tell y'all, but y'all just don't know. And right now, right now, she can't wait for that joke to get home. I go, we're going to get married. I'm like, you going to marry him? You get that one woman that love you like that. I ain't talking about them love for shows. I ain't talking about 
talking about the ones that say, oh, I love you, baby. You love me sometimes, you do, sometimes you don't. I'm you get that one woman that love you, baby, let me tell you something. It don't matter what you do to that woman. It don't matter how often you do it to her. You gonna stick with it. Ain't it, Nicole? You got, you. let me tell you something, baby, about that one woman. You get that one woman to love you, baby. Let me tell you, she's going to move some things for you, baby. And let me tell you, let somebody say something about you if they want to. That woman going down for her. You hear me? You listen to me when I tell you. The Bible says so. <laughs> the Bible says so. The Bible says so, baby. That's that woman that's going to forgive you no matter what you do. That's that woman that's going to be that. I got you, boo. That's that woman, baby, that's gonna be that's that woman that's gonna be there encouraging you. That's that woman that's gonna be praying for you, baby. That's that woman, baby, that's gonna knock, that, that's gonna go off on your family about you. Ha! We talking about that woman that love you for real, for real. Okay. We talking about the sake of love right now. Let's talk about that man that love that one woman. That man that love that one woman. Let me tell you something. I love Abraham. He, he's, <laughs> let me tell you something. Abraham, not only did his wife love him so much, he loved her so much until he didn't even want to die. He loved his wife so much until he lied just so he could still be with her. Not just to save his life, but just so he could still be with her. He loved her. Look, y'all think I'm making these stories up. This is all the stuff that the master gave me. Let me tell you something about love. And, and I'm talking about all this natural stuff. I'm talking about all this natural stuff. How um, Michelle and, and, and David and, and how they love at first sight, how, how David saw Saw that lady had his had her husband killed the first time he saw her. Cause he we talking about some kind of love. Listen to me. We talking about what about Hosea the prophet? He loved his wife so much and she was a whoremonger, a prostitute. Every time you turn around, she out there a whoremonging. Out there doing what she wants. The Bible says he ought. Go get her. Come on, baby. You going home with me. And still took her and know she was a mess. You, we talking about love. That, that's kind of love. That man that love that one woman. It don't matter. You done cheated on me a hundred times. I know you done cheated on me. You done did this. You done did that. I know you're using me. I know you such and such. I know all that. I, but I love you. I love you, though. And it don't matter what happened or what's going on, I love you. I don't care who I've been with or what I'm like, I love you. We're talking about the love for the sake of it all. For the sake of it all. And look, you know she must have been loving him too much and she kept going out there. She only was coming back because it was convenient. She only, we talking about, see, we ain't responsible for who we fall in love with. We're not responsible for who we fall in love with and they make us hate them. Because there's a thin line between love and hate. We're not responsible for that. Because we, we, we may be able to control our emotions, y'all. And y'all emotions know it's just crying, it's laughing, it's, you know, all that stuff. But what we feel, we ain't got no control over. You could say in your heart all you want to, I'm done with that person, I'm, it's over, finished, done, the end, chapter, closed, boo, pops, it's over. You can say as much as you want to, but deep down inside, you know what I'm talking about, don't you, girl? Still love that man. Still love that woman. You know, we, we still, it just don't matter. We talking about love is real, and so is hate. We know love is real, and so is hate. We talking about something that the Lord wanted me to give you guys. Because even in all that, what we don't know, 
is that love of money is the root to all evil. Money, love and money will cause you to act a certain type of way, it'll cause you to do a certain type of thing, it'll cause you to hate a person or hate. It, it, how about you love money so much and you know that person got it all, you just become their friend just so you can try to rob them out of what they got because you hating on them. And what, what about hate? Love is real and so is hate. The Bible declares something about hate. Go to 1 John chapter 3. We're going to start at verse 10. Because I've been praying for God to give us just a little bit more. Just, just to give us just a little bit more love. Ha. Huh. I want you to start at verse 10. The Bible says that you're going to be hated in the midst of you loving somebody oh so much. In the midst of you even loving God Oh, so much. If they're not hating you, they're hating on you. Read. It causes something to happen up inside of us when we hate you. Let's talk about hate first before we get to the love because it's going to get deep, y'all. This, this is the good part. Because I had to give y'all some, some little sad notes first. We pray for more. More love. Read it. This is what hate do. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. I want you to read just a little louder. Put the mic in your mouth, please, baby. Whosoever doeth not righteousness, all is not of God. You, listen, anything that's unrighteous. So if you hate somebody, you thinking of some kind of way that you can pull them down. You, you thinking of some kind of way or something to say about them. Not just in your mind, baby, but in your heart. You going to somebody and you're saying something bad about somebody. You're planting some kind of seeds. You're doing something. You want to see their very demise. We talking about hate right now. Come on, read. Neither he that loveth not his brother. If you don't love me, baby, what's really going on? If you don't love me, then you got some kind of unrighteousness in your heart towards me. But the Bible says that you ought to love me as you love your own self. Do you love me like that? The Bible also says that you ought to love me as I love you. That's what Jesus said. That's what he said. Come on, read. For this is the message that he heard from the beginning. I've been telling y'all from the very beginning, says God. How to just simply love one another. Come on, read. That we should love one another. Got to. Keep reading. Don't stop. I want you to keep reading all the way down to 18. Read. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. Cain was, was wicked brother, and had a righteous in his heart because he killed his brother Abel all because God favored him. Why you trying to kill me? Because I want to live righteous. Why you trying to kill me? Because God talks to me. Why you trying to kill me? Because I got some kind of relationship with him. Why you trying to kill me? Because your relationship ain't with him like mine. Why are you trying to kill me? If you don't love me, you cannot even abide in me, says God. You better love me or you ain't going to heaven like you say you want to go. <laughs> you ain't got it. He Hereby said, perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. He laid down his very life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoso had this world I got something that you need and I don't even want to get into it. I ain't gonna even get to I can actually help you. And you know I can help you, but I'm gonna close my hand to it. Or I'm be someone doing that thing. Let us not love in the world. I'm going to tell you a hundred times how much I love you. But if I ain't doing nothing about that very love that I say, then guess what? It's good for nothing. 
So I made sure I had to tell Katie you on the download, the DL, that's what I'm saying, call it. I said, what the DL mean? He said, mommy, you so slow, it's download. It's a download. I'm, I'm really not liking you on the download. I'm really not liking you on the download. I don't even like nothing about you. <laughs> and I, and, but I say I love you. I come to church, I hug you every day. I tell you, oh, girl, such, such, such. but really in actuality, I don't. And then as soon as you turn your back or you do something that I don't like, the Bible says that love comes from up to the sins. So it don't matter what I do to you. You should be able to forgive me and then throw it in the sin and give it, oh, we can't do that. Oh, I can forgive, but I can't forgive. Then you ain't done forgave me or nothing. Because if something else happened, then you gonna bring up that thing that you say you forgave me from? You ain't forgave me. Because if you forgave me, you gonna love me enough to simply forget about it. This is what the Bible says, y'all. Ain't making that stuff up. The Bible goes on to say in 1 John chapter 3 that we are going to be hated. We are going to be hated by folk. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 21. Read that. Because we need to really get this. Be loved. Let us love one another, for love is of God. Love is of God. If you ain't got the love of God, baby, then you don't love. Born of God and know God. He that loveth not knoweth sin, for sin is born of God. If you don't love, wait, hold First and foremost, if you don't love God, then you don't know nothing about love. You don't know nothing about love. And when you come into the knowledge of loving God, if love is not inside of you, then you don't love God. How did I confuse y'all? Do I need to say that one more time? Because somebody really ain't get it. In order for you to even love, you got to love God. You got to love God. In the midst of you loving God, he's going to put his love inside of you that you will be able to effectively, that's what fervent means, effectively, the Bible says we're supposed to have fervent charity, charity is love, effectively, love one another. For love comes among two the sins. Come on, read. Read, 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 read. In this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his holy begotten son he said, to listen, the world listen. that we might live through him. I've been telling y'all about all this love. I've been telling y'all about all this love because I wanted y'all to see natural before I go to the spiritual thing. The Bible says first that which is natural then that which is spiritual. So, I done gave y'all examples of all this love. If y'all need some more scriptures or whatever, y'all make sure y'all see me after service. I'm going to give y'all all this stuff because I want y'all to read this stuff. I need y'all to understand really what love is. Because until we learn what love is through Christ, then we are not going to even know how to love one another because we simply don't even love our own selves. The Bible says that you have to love one another as you love your own self. The Bible also says that a man is supposed to love his wife like God loved the church. God loved the church so much until he gave his very life. Listen, read that book. Read it for me. See, we don't know the magnitude of love. It's scarcely a man going to put his life down for one another. Who in here going to die for me? I don't see no hands. Who in here? Who on die? But you won't die for your, won't you die for your son and your daughter? Won't you die for your kid? That, oh, it's going down, baby. I'm going to die for mine. You, keeping it real. For real, for real. Who is going to put their life down? We won't even love God enough to keep his commandment to love one another. We won't even love one another. Because if I see you getting something, see you doing something, why I'm hating on you? I should be happy for you because you're doing good. I should be happy for you because you did. I should be happy for you because God favoring you. It just ain't my season yet. So when my season comes, I'm going to need you to jump for joy for me because that's what I'm going to jump for joy for you. And while I'm jumping for joy for you, I may catch some of the residue because I like residue too. Sometimes it's better than a gift that was given. I keep telling y'all that. I done got so much residue. <laughs> oh boy. I done got a whole lot of residue. 
God has allowed people to come into my life and favor me, baby, and say, it's nothing that I lack. I promise y'all that. We're talking about love. I dare you to love me for real. I dare you to love him, her, they, we, and all of us for real. I double dare you to love somebody like you love yourself. How about loving that very person that try to slander you and talk about you? How about loving that very person that you know hates you? How about loving even in the knowing? How about loving for real? When you can literally hear a conversation and you miles and miles away. Huh? How about that kind of love? How about that kind of love? How about that kind of love that when you do hear, you got compassion for that person because they really don't even know. They really don't even know. They really don't even know. How about loving some type of body or some type of person or some type of thing all for the sake of simply loving? How about that? How about because you say I still love you? How, how about that? How about that? How about because you done did me some type of way and I'm feeling some type of way and you done, how about I love you still? How about, how about I love you because you betrayed me? I don't still gonna love you. Do I still love you? Yeah, I still love you. How about I love you when you just flat out stood in my face and told me you ain't me? How about that? How about I still love you? How about that? How about I love you when I wanted you to love me and you don't and I still love you? Huh? How about that? Yeah. How about that? How about I love even in rejection? God did it. Jesus did it. They rejected him. He said he was bruised. For our transgressions. What kind of love is that? Jesus loved us so much. And so when God wanted to destroy us, He said, Holy God, don't go, don't go, don't ah, ah, ah. You said you made them for you, God. You said you made them for you, so don't kill them, don't get away from anyway. Prepare me a body, I'll go down there for them because I, I feel sorry for them, God. I feel sorry for them, God, because they really don't know how much you love them. So I'm going to go down there and show them because you keep saying why they can't get it right. They don't want to get it right. We got to can't get it right. Y'all remember that movie? Can't get it right. We can't get it right. So since we can't get it right, Jesus said, hold it. Don't kill them yet. Don't kill them yet. I got so much passion for them, God, because I know, I know you give them a brand new mercy every day, God. You giving them that grace, they don't even deserve it. But you're giving it to them. So I'm asking you not to kill them, God. Because I know you can just wipe them out, God, with just a blow. He can, and we can all just drop. And be lifeless. He can bring life to a dry bone, baby. What makes you think he can't take it? He loves us so much until he even spares us. He said, if your brother, your sister sin against you, how many times you supposed to forgive? He said, seven times, seven times. So you supposed to keep on forgiving me. So even though you know I'm a mess, even though you know I'm acting a way that you hate all oh, so much, you still supposed to love me and you supposed to forgive me. Oh, you ain't forgiving me? Then you don't love me then. You don't even love God. Because God said that if you love him, you gonna love him like you want me to forgive you, don't you? If you don't forgive them, him or they will all. Then I'm not going to forgive you. But you say you love me. The greatest commandment of them all. I shut it up. It's a simply love me. So it don't matter. It don't matter. You ain't got to love me. I'm going to love you. I promise I'm going to love you because I'm trying to make more for me. I promise I'm going to love you and I'm not going to be playing it either. I don't know how to fake love. I don't know how to fake love. I had fake love for so many years until so I thought it was real love until when God did show me how real love was and then I was like, well, what in the world was I doing? I'm trying to figure out what really was I doing? How was I even doing it? We use our body for love. We use our money for love. You cannot take money and buy enough love. You can't show a person how much you love them by buying them something you're going to mess around and be in poverty. Keep it up. Lose everything you've got. You cannot be 
give your body enough to a person to show you love. You can't do nothing for a person enough to show them that you love them. There's only one thing. Let me tell you, I'm somebody who did it all to show just how much he loved us. He loved us so much he gave his very life. Even when he knew that we was a mess. Even in the midst of him giving his own life, he knew that we still was going to be a mess. But instead of us having to go through all the other stuff, because you know they used to have a little scapegoat. They used to have a scapegoat for the sins. He said, I carry it all for them, God. I do it all for them. I just don't want you to get rid of them all. Because you made them for your pleasure. And if you made them for your pleasure, Father God, I know that you love them. You love them so much until you're still trying to figure out why they can't get it right. And so you sit me down here that I can, I can experience some of that stuff. The Bible says that Jesus knows the very infirmities that we have in our body. So why we still say, oh yeah, I know God knows my heart, the flesh is weak, I got it, so, so, so. yeah, right. Do you love him enough to keep yourself under subjection? No, we got the go What you want, baby? Yeah, uh-huh. We don't even love God enough. We don't love him enough to keep our hands clean. To stop doing this and to stop doing that. But he loved us so much. And because he know we're going to keep messing up, he keep giving us that brand new mercy. But he don't want us to keep messing up. So he got to keep telling us. He got to keep showing us. And in him showing us is what? By allowing us to simply breathe. Huh. We got so much pride, we don't even want to say we're sorry. We so stubborn. I ain't did nothing. I don't think I even have to say I'm sorry. I didn't do nothing. I don't feel like I deserve that. But, but I done apologized a hundred million times and I know I ain't just being nothing. I'm still trying to figure out now why people hate me and talking about me. I'm still trying to figure out now. The very man that slandered my name, I had to pray for him on his deathbed. And he died and did not even say I'm sorry. <laughs> and I love them enough to, to, to pray for his very life and the Lord spared them a whole nother year before he took his very breath can you still pray for that person can you do you got that kind of love how for real oh I'm praying for the love and all of us can we actually forgive one another no matter what we always holding stuff against one another we're looking for the fault we're looking for the air. Oh, I, I, I think you should have did this. Oh, oh, I expect this from you. And I, what, the, you what you need to expect is your own self to do right. Who, who in here ain't doing right? All of us doing something we ain't got no cotton picking business doing. Stop pointing your finger at me because you got three pointing back at you and the other one pointing down in hell. I ain't going with you. I would hold hands going to heaven shouting and saying, that's what I want to do. So I'm praying for more. More love, God. More forgiveness in the hearts and the minds of our people. We can't love and forgive sincerely because we still harping and thinking on that thing that they said, that thing that they did, the way that they act. We taking stuff from our past and brought it into our future. How do we do that? Because we harbored it inside of our hearts. We got that thing inside of our hearts and we won't even let it go. And then we get to compete. We get to point fingers. We get to look at. We get to talking about one another. The Lord said, why do we devour and bite on one another all the time? Huh? I can't even hardly say nobody, nothing about nobody. No. The Lord is on my head. It's so easy. It's so easy. It's so easy. Of course, not the lie. And then, and then, Lord, I love you. You don't even know how to love because you didn't even receive the love that you needed to receive when you was a kid. Your mom and your daddy ain't never even hugged you and said that they loved you. Your mom and your daddy did not even nurture you into love. They just gave you stuff. It just provided for you. That's all they did for you. They taught you to right from wrong. They taught you how to be good and bad. But did they simply give you the love that you needed? Did they simply show you how to love? And then you wonder why, oh yeah, you don't even know how to accept love. Do we? We don't know how to accept love from one another. Ah, we put it down. We cast it to the side. We take it for granted. 
We use that word so loosely. We use it so loosely. And that's what we do. Can we really love our enemies? Can we? Can we? For real, for real. It's hard. It's hard. To love somebody that hates you. Or love somebody that's always against you. Or you know they want to see your demise. Or they want to see you fall. How about knowing somebody trying to curse you when God done bless you? Can't nobody curse nothing God bless. Flat out. I don't care how hard they try, how hard they pray. They better hope that thing don't turn around on them. Because the Bible says it will. I ain't making this stuff up, such the scriptures. For real, for real. Do we love? The Bible says that if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. What is the command thou should not kill God? It goes a little deeper than that. It goes a little deeper than that. We pose a better in front of this other week. Do I love you enough to see you in that dark place until I'm going to come down in that dark place with you? I'm going down, baby, in the guttermost darkness with you. And guess what? I'm pulling you up out that thing because that ain't where you need to be. That ain't where you need to be. You want me to go on that ride with you? I'm going on the ride with you, but I'm going to pull you off that ride because I don't even like rides. So we gonna go together, baby. I'm pulling you up off that way because you make it crazy in the stomach. Oh, I want you to be crazy. I know. I don't want you to be so broken until it's a puzzle that cannot be put back together. I'm gonna pick you up and I'm gonna try to help you put that piece in that right place. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna love you forever. I'm gonna love you with everything in me. And even when you're feeling some type of way about me, I'm still going to love you with everything in me. God forbid if I don't. Because I don't want to go to hell. And if I don't love nobody, then guess what? I'm going to hell. The book of Revelation describes what hell is. I don't want to go there. I don't want no worms coming out of me. I don't want my flesh to fall off, come back on. I don't want to be running all eternity, infinity. No. I don't want that. I want to love for real. I want to love for real. And the only reason, and the only way that I'd be able to love like that is, is from the help of God. Because he is my everything. He is my everything. In him being my everything, in him being my everything, then I'd be able to love right. I'd be able to love right. Even in spite of. I'm not too proud. To apologize and say I'm sorry. I'm not. I don't know how many times I've been saying I'm sorry to somebody. And I'm going to say it one more time. I'm sorry, Jemonica. If I did anything that made you feel some type of way. But if God gave me something to tell you and it's the truth, baby, I'm telling you, I'm not sorry for that. But I will tell you. I'm sorry, Azor. If I said anything, may have hurt your feelings or made you feel some type of way. But if God tell me to say it, baby, I'ma say it won't be unto me. I'm not sorry for that. But I love you still. I'm sorry, Kita. If I said anything to you that made you feel some type of way or act some type of ways towards me. But if God told me to say it, I'm not sorry for that. And I love you still. I'm sorry, Jaquali, because he had me on all y'all head. He had me on all y'all head. I'm sorry. If I said anything to you, or made you feel any, some, any type of way, but if God told me to say it, I'm going to say it, you know it. And I love you still. Nicole, I'm sorry, baby. If I said anything to you that made you feel some type of way, or some type of way towards me, but if God told me to say it, baby, I'm going to say it. I'm not sorry for that. And I love you still. I'm sorry, sweetie. And I don't even know you. If by chance I may happen to say something to you and make you feel some type of way. If God told me to say it, I'm going to say it. And I'm not sorry for that. And I love you still. I'm sorry. If at any time in the future, I see you again. That I may say something to you that makes you feel any type of way. I apologize to you. 
But if God told me to say it, I'm not stopping you. And I love you, sweet. I love you. It don't matter what I may say or how I may say. If I offend you, I'm sorry. But if God told me to say it, I'm not a sinner. And I love you, sweet. Janae, I'm sorry, baby. If I say anything to you, that made you feel some type of way. But if God told me to say, baby, I've got to say it. I'm not sorry for that. And yes, I love you. Yes. I'm sorry, Jack. If I said anything to you that made you feel some type of way. But if God told me to say it, I've got to say it. I'm not sorry for that. And I love you still. I'll take it. I'm sorry, baby. If I said anything to you, baby, I'll say it. If God had me to say it, you already know I gotta say it. And that's how it's left. And I love you still. I'm sorry, Kadisha. If I said anything to you, then they'll offend you. If God had me to say it, gotta say it. Sorry for that. And I love you still. Great. <laughs> I love you. I love you. If I say anything to offend you, just please forgive me. If God told me to say it, I gotta say it. I ain't sorry for that. And yet I love you. I love you. I love you. If I say anything that makes you hurt, or feel any type of way. Please forgive me. Please. If God told me to say it, I gotta say it. And I love you still. I'm sorry, Father. If I have said anything to you, offended you in any type of way, anyway, fashion or form. But if God told me to say it, I gotta say it. I'm not sorry. From the children all the way up to the adults, I apologize to you. I love you guys. I love you guys with everything in me. If I felt like anybody in here offended me or said anything to me that made me feel some type of way, I forgive you with everything in me. If God tell you to tell me something, please tell me. Because I dare not want to err. I dare not want to err. And I love you still. It ain't going to change nothing. It's not going to change nothing. I'm going to ask everybody to come to the altar that I may pray that God give us all the love that we need. I'm going to ask Minister Simeon, please. Anoint everybody for me, please. We go. 